Horrors and gents, Umbrus UX, and this is the last star in the universe. Red dwarfs explained by the channel because Gazard in a nutshell. The last star in the universe will be a red dwarf. But wouldn't it be white dwarf? Because, you know, white dwarfs live for what? Uh, 100 million billion years, such a long time. So wouldn't it be white dwarfs? Those are the last light, not the red dwarfs. Yeah. Red dwarfs in general might be a great place to look for aliens or planets for humans to find a new home after our solar system has died. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> long time in the future where it's only red dwarves left. Yeah, humanity will need to, I guess, uh, find red dwarves to live under. But I guess at that time, which is extremely long time, if humanity survives for that long, I think we'll, have, we'll find a way to somehow create some artificial star or something, right? I think we'll be able to control our environment more rather than seek out red dwarves to live under. I don't know. Maybe that's uh, far out there to think about. Maybe that's unachievable, but who knows? So let's go this one. Remember, if you like my Dixon, if you like and subscribe, check out the Dixon Day. They're selling it this season. Check out the castle place. Check out the cards in yeah, Let's watch it. One day, the last star will die, and the universe will turn dark forever. It will probably be a red dwarf, a tiny kind of star that's also one of our best bets to find alien life and might be the last home of humanity before the universe becomes uninhabitable. So, what do we know about them, and why are they our last hope? At least 70% of stars in the universe are red dwarfs. They are the tiniest stars out there, with only about 7-50% to of the mass of our Sun, not that much bigger than our planet Jupiter, which is still yeah. huge though. They are also very dim. It's impossible to see them with the naked eye. You've never seen one in the night sky. Even with all our technology, we can only clearly observe red dwarfs in our neighborhood. Approximately 20 of the Yeah, red dwarfs are, since they're red, so, you know, they're not emitting, you know, a uh, higher uh, energy spectrum of light because they are not burning that hot, basically. So they're not burning the fuel faster like the other ones, like blue stars and, you know, uh, mean sequence stars like our sun. 30 stars close to Earth are red dwarfs. Like all stars, red dwarfs fuse hydrogen into helium. But while more massive stars accumulate all the fused helium in their cores, red dwarfs stay convective, meaning that the helium and hydrogen constantly mix. So they use up their fuel incredibly slowly before they're extinguished. Red dwarfs burn so slowly that their average lifespan is between Trillions. 1 and 10 trillion years. By comparison, the Sun will survive for another 5 billion years. Because the universe is only 13.75 billion years old, not a single red dwarf has reached later development stages. Yeah. Every single one of the trillions that exist is still... It's like nothing, right? For the red dwarf's age, 13 billion years is nothing. A baby. Speaking of babies, the smallest star in the entire universe is also a red dwarf because small red dwarfs are right on the verge of being a star at all. Just a tiny bit less hydrogen and they are mere brown dwarfs, failed stars that cannot sustain a fusion reaction oh, that's for long. Graphics. So what about aliens or a new home for humanity? Since our sun will die one day, we'll eventually need to look for a new home. And where there are habitable planets, there might also be aliens. Yeah, I think we'll find a new home much earlier before our star dies in a billion years, basically. In a billion years, it won't die, but it will reach a state that, you know, it's uh, it will be very difficult or even impossible to live on the planet. But I'm pretty sure we'll be, you know, finding other homes much longer before that. The Kepler Space Observatory found that at least half of all red dwarfs host rock planets between half and four times the mass of our Earth. Many of them are in the habitable zone, the area around a star where water can be liquid. Goldilocks zone. But since red dwarfs burn at relatively cold temperatures, a planet would need to be really close to be hospitable. Probably as close as Mercury. Yeah, so basically, when we live under red dwarf in so solar system which has red dwarf, everything will be red. I just, I don't know, it feels depressing to me. If we live there, go out and everything will be red, 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 because it's a red light. Red dwarf is emitting red life, a red light. By the way, our sun is white, right? I mean, 
I don't know why, but if you ask anybody that's just, you know, averagely anybody who's passing on the street or anybody who asks what is the color of our sun, everybody will either say yellow or orange, which is kind of after, right? Can't, it's not yellow, it's white, right? You see the sun as orange or yellow, whatever, in the horizon, at the horizon, it's about to, you know, sunset or whatever, sunrise, sunset, whatever. It's because it's passing through a lot, lot of atmosphere. So all those higher frequency of light gets, you know, basically filtered out like blues and things. So the more it's, you know, at the horizon, the more light fil gets filtered out because, you know, it has to pass through the cross side of, uh, of all our atmosphere, basically. If it's, you know, directly above our head, it's not that much atmosphere for the light to pass. So even then, you know, it does filter uh, lots of blues. That's why the sky looks blue. But it's, you know, it, it's not yellow. You can see it because you can directly look at the sun, but sun is pure white. That's why any, uh, you know, videos and photos from, you know, international space doesn't anything shows the sun. It's like somebody's, you know, putting torch in the face or something. Pure white. Mercury to our sun, or even closer. Which brings with it all kinds of problems. For example, a planet this close to a star would probably be tidally locked, meaning the same side would always face it. This side would be tidally locked because the because star would be like you know holding the face like look at me. <laughs> be incredibly hot, while the shadow side would be frozen, which makes it hard for life to develop. Although a planet with a big enough ocean might be able to distribute the star's energy and create some kind of stability. Yeah, but you know, the hot side and cold side, between those uh, line, you could have, uh, you know, place to live, I guess. All the gravitational forces of the Red Dwarf could squeeze the planet and heat it up so much that it might lose all its water over time. These planets could end up like Venus, a hot, burning hell. Another problem is that many Red Dwarfs vary in their energy output. They can be covered in star spots that can dim their emitted light by up to 40% for months, which would cause oceans on planets to freeze over. At other times, they can emit powerful solar flares, sudden outbursts of energy incredibly powerful. These red dwarfs can double their brightness in minutes, which could strip away yeah. sizable portions of a planet's atmosphere and... That's the problem with lots of stars, right? Uh, thankfully, our sun is not like that. I mean, it, it is variable, but not at that degree. Lots of stars, so, you know, variable in their energy. Sometimes it's really hot, sometimes it's not, it, you know, so it's hard to, you know, maintain life on some planet. Burn it, rendering it sterile. On the other hand, their extremely long lifespan is a big plus. A red dwarf with just moderate levels of activity could be an amazing place for a planet that hosts life. Life on Earth has existed for about 4 billion years, and we have about a billion years left before the sun becomes so hot that complex life on Earth will become impossible. We will either die out or leave Earth and look for a new home. We could build a civilization for potentially trillions of years around a red dwarf with the right conditions. About 5% of the red dwarfs in the Milky Way may host habitable, roughly Earth-sized planets. That's that way too would many be planets. more than 4 billion in total. But life may not even need a planet like Earth. Candidates for life around a red dwarf may be the moons of gas giants, also called super-Earths, really massive rocky planets. All in all, there are an estimated 60 billion potentially habitable planets around red dwarfs. Yeah, so basically, you know, uh, moons of Jupiter type of thing. So if you live around the gas sands, moons of gas sand, you could do that. But you would need an artificial layer that protects from all the radiation because these gas sands would have immense type of radiation that basically kills all the life, right? So you need to have some kind of artificial layer around the moon to, you know, live from there, I guess. And that's in the Milky Way alone. So red dwarfs might become really important for our survival in the future. But everything has to die at some point, even red dwarfs. When in trillions of years the life of the last red dwarf in the universe is about to end, it will not be a very spectacular event. As its hydrogen runs out, it shrinks, becoming a blue dwarf burning out completely. After its fuel is spent, it's transformed into a white dwarf, yeah. an object about as small as Earth, packed very densely and made of degenerate gases, mostly of helium-4 nuclei. Having no more source of energy, it will cool extremely slowly over trillions of years until it becomes its final form, a cold black dwarf. White and black dwarfs are so fascinating that they deserve their own video. Anyway, it's going to be a long time before the last stars in the universe vanish. It's kind of uplifting to know that if humanity succeeds in venturing into space, 
we have plenty of time before the universe turns out the lights. Our videos are made thanks to your support on Patreon.com. If you want to help us make more of them, we really appreciate your support. Yeah, people, uh, go to the description with the original video page. And from there, you know, support this channel on Patreon. This is a great, great channel. I love science, basically, all the science, especially physics and astrophysics, things like that. And this channel is just great for that. So, yeah. Red dwarfs. Basically, it would be really weird to live on a pl uh, planet which has a red dwarf. Everything would be red, red. But I guess it's better than nothing. I mean, it's not like you have a choice. If you have a choice, you would l live under some main sequence stars like our sun. But if th th those are not around, you have to go to the red dwarfs. I feel like until then, we'll find a way to create artificial stars somehow. So I guess we won't probably need red dwarfs. I don't know. Maybe. Probably will. If you like my next one, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the breaks, and there's a link in the description, check out the cards, so please check the link cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.